Welcome to another episode of Rotator Cup Expert. My name is Dr. Orcutt. Um, I'm a board certified orthopedic surgeon, and today we're going to talk about the biceps. Uh, we often have problems with the biceps when we also have problems with the rotator cuff. Uh, so it's important for us to understand um, that so that we can uh, better understand the, the anatomy and then what we do to fix it. So when we look at um, the biceps and the rotator cuff, they're so intimately entwined, especially in the front of the shoulder, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. The front of the shoulder, <clears throat> what the biceps uh, attaches to and why it's important, and then what do we do when the biceps is torn? How do we uh, manage that? And some of it depends on what kind of tear the biceps is. It depends on how the age uh, of the patient and the attachment of the biceps. So the first thing we do need to do is talk about, is talk about the anatomy of the biceps. What it, where is it in, in regards to the shoulder? And so first of all, we talk about the, the proximity, right? If you have a proximal problem here, so everybody knows the biceps, right? The biceps here, everybody knows that. And that biceps attaches to a tendon up here and attaches a tendon down here. So it's, if it's down here where it attaches actually to your uh, lower arm, that's the proximal, I'm sorry, that's the distal biceps. The distal biceps is, is held together to the to muscle the radius and the radial tuberosity down here by one tendon. When we go up the arm, we talk about the biceps, and the biceps attaches in two places actually up into the shoulder. So the two places are here. One, it comes up and around and attaches to the top of the socket, the glenoid socket, attached to the top of the socket. And there's another tendon that attaches out here to another bone called the coracoid. So that's why there's the, the definition of the biceps is by because there's two attachments up, up, up front. So the, the, the tear that we are worried about when we talk about biceps is actually the biceps here where it attaches to the socket. Um, we don't really worry about that where it attaches to the coracoid. It can be torn there, but it's rare. So almost always when we talk about biceps tendon, biceps tendon tears proximally in the shoulder, we're talking about the attachment to the labrum. And that's another term. So the labrum is how the biceps, so here represents the biceps. The biceps comes here and attaches to the labrum. The labrum is the stuff that goes around the socket. And so when we talk about biceps and we talk, we, ha we have to talk about labrums too, uh, because often the attachment of where the biceps and the labrum come together is where the tear is. So that means we can't talk about biceps and attachments and treatments without understanding the labrum. And the labrum uh, is torn off and with the biceps. And so we have different, different kind of tears of the labrum. So specifically, we're going to talk about tears of the labrum where it attaches to the top of the socket. There are other labral tears that we see in other instances, but we will save that for another day. So when we talk about the, the biceps and where it attaches to the labrum, depending on how the, the tear is will determine um, what the treatment is. And so when we talk about biceps and labral tears, we're talking about the the upper part of it. So that means we call it the superior part of it. And we have a tear that is going to go from anterior, the front, to posterior. So when we talk about labral tears and biceps tears in the shoulder, we term this a slap tear. Slap meaning superior labrum, anterior to posterior. So superior labrum, anterior to posterior. So that's the definition of what a slap tear is. And so oftentimes people get confused. They say, I have a rotator cuff tear, I have a biceps tear, I have a labral tear, and I have a slap tear. And they're all true, um, uh, but, but they're, they're kind of combined. Uh, if you have a labral tear, you, you, have to have a, a, you have to have a biceps tear, and you have to have a uh, uh, slap tear. So they often get confusing in people's heads, and the part of the reason why we're doing this today. So there are 10 different slap tears. We're not gonna go through all 10. There's four major slap tears. And within the second tear category, there's actually three in there as well. But we're just gonna go, because this is really about biceps, not really about slaps, we're gonna talk about, um, quickly uh, talk about the labrum and the slap tears, and then we'll move on to what that means to the biceps and what do we do about it when we have a rotator cuff tear as well as a biceps tear. So. There are four different kinds, and you, we're going to get a graphics and it come up in just a minute, and you'll see the four different kinds, but I will, I'll talk through them here too. So here, so we already know it's going to be in the, in the top. And so the first slap tear is type 1 slap tear. means we just have irritation or roughening of it. It's still attached to the, to the, to the socket, still stacks to the glenoid, but it's frayed. And almost everybody who's over the age of 40, 45 is going to have some type of a type 1 slap tear. It's not really super important. It's just part of the aging process, the wear and tear process. And so if we have a type one slap tear, we'll just kind of smooth that out. No big deal, not a big problem, 
Although you still may see that the doctor, if, after your surgery, did a slap uh, debridement of the labrum, we call it. It's not really uh, probably a big part of your pain pattern or won't be a big part in your recovery. The rotator cuff will dominate. The rotator cuff almost always dominates the recovery of shoulder surgery, specifically involving the rotator cuff. So the second is a labral tear where you have some, some detachment of the labrum from the socket. So it's not just frayed, it's actually detached, so it can move. And so when you have a type two slap tear, then we have to decide what to do with this type two slap tear. And a type two slap tear in someone who's, we'll say 30 or so older, maybe a little bit 35, something like that, depending on the surgeon, depending on uh, the, the belief of that surgeon, we will probably um, not reattach it, which means we will do a cut here and that cut of the biceps tendon, so no longer, it no longer attaches to the labrum. If it doesn't attach to the labrum, then it doesn't cause pain. And we just kind of clean up the labrum. So we, bicep, we take the biceps and we cut it. That's called a biceps tenotomy. And we can determine, we can decide what we're going to do with the biceps tenotomy after we do the tenotomy. But that would be something that we would, we would do for someone who's older. Um, again, not that old, 35, 30. 40, something like that. Again, depending on your surgeon's preference, you do test that biceps. We're going to just decide what we're going to do with that detached biceps, but we'll almost always detach it because if we don't and we try to repair it and someone who's, again, in, in that mid, middle age range, almost always it gets stiff, especially if we're going to do the labor repair and then we're going to fix the rotator cuff that's on top of it. Those two shoulder surgeries almost always create a very stiff shoulder. And over years of understanding that and in practice, most of us who do a lot of shoulder surgery will not do a rotator cuff repair as well as a slap repair, uh, except for very young patients. And, but if we did a slap repair, let's say this is a 18 year old pitcher and he doesn't have a rotator cuff tear. He just has a slap tear and it's a type two slap tear. So what we do is we put a little anchor that goes in the bone and we, and depending on exactly the type of slap, type two slap tear, we'll, tie some here and tie some here and, and we'll tie it back down. So when we tie it back down, that really inhibits uh, how much motion you can do afterwards. The rehab is significant. And that's part of the reason why it's hard to um, recover from a slap repair plus a rotator cuff repair. So what we would do in that slap is we would tie it back down and then we'd have protocol of recovery and healing. So that's a type two slap tear. Type three slap tear is actually a little bit hard to understand and that the, the slap tear actually extends into the biceps and then flaps down. And so, as you can imagine, again, the graphic will make this much easier to see than what I'm showing you here. It pulls down and that slap tear, we would debride the slap tear and we would probably, again, depending on the patient and the, and the age range, we would do the same thing as we do with the type two slap tear. We'd either fix it or release it in preparation for doing something else or not. And we'll talk about that in our second video but release it. So that's a type three slap tear. Type four slap tear goes up into the biceps itself. And the type four slap tear is a difficult scenario, usually type four slap tear. Um, it's rare to have a, slap, a type four slap tear. But if you have a type four slap tear, then we'll talk about probably doing a biceps tenotomy in preparation to doing something else with the biceps. So now you understand we have biceps with two tendons this tendon almost never is injured, and therefore we don't, don't talk about it too much. We're talking about the biceps tendon that goes up into what's called the bicep groove, comes up over and attaches to the top of the glenoid. Now, it's also important to know that there's a tendon here called the subscapularis, which actually extends right to this inside of the biceps tendon. And then there's another tendon going up here, the supersonatus. So the biceps goes right in between those two. And that's called the rotator cuff interval. So we have a bicep going up into between into the rotator cuff interval and attaches onto the labrum. So, and now we understand that anatomy. We understand this anatomy of slap. We understand why slap and biceps are, are really important. They're integrated together. Um, and then we'll talk on the next video, we're gonna talk about what do we do in someone who's older. So when we talk about rotator cuff repair, typically it's gonna be an older person meaning older than 30. It's rare to have an injury to the rotator cuff uh, unless it's a very traumatic injury in a younger person. So usually we're talking about a rotator cuff tear and someone's a little bit older, not old because I'm older than 30, a little bit older and um, involving the biceps. We'll talk about what we do with the biceps on the next episode. So thanks for watching. Please like and 
Again, any comments below and follow and subscribe and we appreciate your time. And we'll talk about uh, the biceps and again in the next video.